The bosses of this game may be very basic and appear a lot, but that doesn't mean anything can't be said about them. Several boss creatures that would be important later down the series has their origin coming from this game. So it's about time I break them down, and this is what I consider a boss creature in this game. An enemy that doesn't necessarily appear before the trifle shard and gives you a heart container, but an enemy that either appears as a boss or as a bigger foe that doesn't respawn after being killed. That to me is a boss creature, and they will appear in this boss breakdown video. With no further ado, let's begin breaking down the bosses. Aquamentus. Aquamentus is the game's very first boss, and he's a big old dragon guarding the trifle shard, or as it appears mid-dungeon guarding the entrance to the next door. He has everything under control because he guards a narrow path. Doesn't do much except moving back and forth, occasionally spitting three fireballs towards the player, which varies in the distance between them. Generally doesn't take many sword hits and can be killed rather quickly with bombs. Appears as a boss in Dungeon 7 as well as Dungeon 1 of the second quest, and that's the last time Aquamentus got the chance to protect the Triforce Shard. Something to note is that the bosses of The Legend of Zelda 1 isn't all that complex, but Aquamentus is fun enough to fight for what it is. Aquamentus would only appear in this game as well as Oracle of Seasons. Moldorm Moldorm is a snake that looks like fireballs that like to slither around the room. In fact, that's what they do. They do have the advantage over Link that they can move in 8 different directions, but they move rather slowly so they are an easy target despite their movement option. They always come in packs of 2 and they have 5 body parts each. They don't protect any trifle shards and are generally just an easy to deal with obstacle for the player. They are fun to fight because they are easy to deal with and they don't respawn. Appears in various dungeons but they first appear in dungeon 2 on the first quest. They can easily be killed with a sword. Moldorm would be treated well and appears in several other Zelda titles where they would be promoted to actual boss status. Dodongo! Dodongo dislikes smoke is the hint given to you in the second dungeon where the Dodongo protects the Triforce piece. You can kill them in two different ways, placing a bomb inside their stomach twice for them to explode and also do a funny facial expression as well as planting a bomb directly under a soft belly but I prefer placing the bomb inside them for the easiest and most effective kill. One single Dodongo appears as the boss of the second dungeon, but they are often seen in the dungeons either by themselves or in packs of two or three. On the first quest, you will get them in occasionally pack of three. In the second quest, they are always in packs of three and are the boss of dungeon three and eight respectively. In fact, they appear a lot in the dungeons in the second quest, especially in the eighth dungeon. They are fun to fight at first, but they quickly become a bomb hogger only place to waste your bombs. A decent threat if you run out of bombs, as they become undefeatable at that point. The Dongo famously appear in several other games as well as Hyrule Warriors. Manhandla! Manhandla is one of the harder boss creatures in The Legend of Zelda for the NES if you tackle them with your sword. You have to destroy the four stalks in order to kill it or by destroying the core. They spit fireballs through every stalk, and if one is cut down, they start moving faster and start shooting more frequently and aggressively. A well placed bomb can kill them in one go though, so aim for that if you want to make them easier. They are the boss of dungeon 3, but tend to appear in dungeons often as an obstacle and usually in several different rooms as well. Ironically in the second quest, they don't guard a single Triforce piece, but appear in several dungeons to hamper your progress. The Mahandras are fun to fight against despite being difficult, and it always feels nice when they die. Manhandler would return in Oracle of Seasons and Four Swords alongside Hyrule Warriors. Gleok Gleok is another big old dragon, but with multiple heads. Your first encounter with them as a guardian of Dungeon 4, they have two heads. Kill one hand, and the head will start flying around the room quickly spitting fireballs at you. The Gleok itself shoots fireball at you as well, trying to bite you with its extended necks. They are the boss of dungeon 8 with 4 heads and show up in the middle of dungeon 6 with 3 heads. In the second quest they appear as Triforce Guardians no less than 3 times, making them the most popular boss. Each time with one more head than the other, starting from 2 ending with 4. 
Second quest has them guard the Trifle Shard in Dungeon 2, 5 and 8. The only way to defeat them is to stab away at their heads, so go nuts and keep an extra health potion just in case, as they are good at killing you. They do give you a fun fight that is difficult, which is nice. Gleeok only returns to Oracle of Seasons, getting the Aquamentus treatment. Dig Dogger! Dig Dogger cannot be hurt at all, but this demon hates sound, so if you play the recorder, it will break apart into smaller pieces. When you encounter it as a Triforce guarding boss in Dungeon 5, it only splits into one piece, but when you fight it in other dungeons, it usually splits into three pieces. These pieces move quickly and sporadically around the room, but keep calm and stab them the best you can, and they will go down easy. They also appear as the boss of Dungeon 4 in the second quest, which splits into 3 when the recorder is played. Rather easy to fight against and won't pose much of a big threat itself. Dig Dogger will only appear in Oracle of Season again, where it would be completely different. Goma! Your first encounter with Goma is a joke, as she dies in one hit with the arrow to the eye. The only way of hurting her. She's the boss of Dungeon 6, and it's the only time you fight against her orange variant, as the blue one can take at least 3 hits. Another popular boss that like to cameo in other dungeons. It moves from side to side, shooting fireballs through its eye, and occasionally closing it. In the second quest, it's the boss of Dungeon 6, again, but it stays blue instead of orange. She's fun to fight against, and she's kind of like Metroid's Ridley in a way, that she often appears in the other Zelda titles as a boss in them as well. While she never made it to, into A Link to the Past, she makes up for it by appearing in several of the 3D Zelda games after that, as well as in Hyrule Warriors. Lanmola! Lanmolas are snakes that move super fast, and if you were to strike them with your sword in the middle, they would split into two smaller Lanmolas. The orange variant moves slower than the blue one, but I found that using the magic rod with the magic book was the most effective way to deal with them, as the direct hit and the remaining fire destroys the Lanmola quickly bit by bit. As they move quickly, the one hit with the rod would ensure you dealt lots of damage against them and flat out destroy them if you got lucky. This boss creatures only appears in the final dungeon of both quests, and for good reason as they can easily trip you up and damage you as they avoid your attacks. They are pretty fun to fight against though. Lanmolas would appear as bosses in two other mainline Zelda titles. Patra! Patra's a big fly, surrounded by a swarm of smaller flies, surrounding it like a circular barrier that it can widen and move around attacking Link. You have to deal with it by destroying the smaller flies gradually, opening up the barrier in order to get through. The flies also travel around the Patra. Only way to hurt them is by using the sword, at least as far as I know, and you have to deal with all the smaller flies before you can start damaging the Queen Patra in the middle. As all the smaller flies are gone, it's a cakewalk as the Patra will only fly around the room. Only appears in the final dungeon on both quests, and generally appears as obstacles trying to hindrance your progress in reaching Ganon and Princess Zelda. They are pretty fun to fight, but they deal a lot of damage and can take a beating, so don't be cocky and take it slow while fighting them. Having a restore potion close by while against them is not a bad idea. Ganon! He's the big bad of the game and the final obstacle of both quests. He's the Prince of Darkness, the unholiest of holiest. He's none other than the pig running the show. He's Ganon! Ganon is a little bit of a coward. He's invisible and teleports around the room, and every time he teleports, he fires a magic ball towards you. So you have to stab blindly into the abyss, in hopes that he teleports in front of your stabbing blade, so that he takes damage. However, blade alone won't be enough to save you, because you also need the silver arrows in order to land the final blow, destroying Ganon for good. At least for now, anyway. This must be done once the beast has been stunned by enough cuts and turned brownish red. That's your cue to firing the silver arrow on onto his chest. Ganon isn't much for a fight, to be honest, but since he's invisible, he can make short work of you if you aren't careful or get unlucky with your stabby stab stab. He's the weakest of final bosses due to the limitation of the NES, but he's decent fun at the very least. 
Once he has been slain, you may enter the chambers to guard it to save Princess Zelda and bring true peace for Hyrule. Until the next reincarnation of Ganon at the very least. There we have it everyone. We've gone through all the bosses and broken them down to pieces and defeated each and every one of them. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, become part of the Frog Squad by subscribing and hitting that bell icon. Don't forget to let me know what you thought about the video by leaving a comment. Join the Discord, link is in the description, and break down that good old like button. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and may we see each other in another legend. Take care everybody, and have a nice day. Hello everybody, thank you very much for watching this boss breakdown on the NES Zelda bosses. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, consider becoming part of the Frog Squad by subscribing today if you aren't already. Press that good old thumbs up. Share what you thought about it by leaving a comment down below. Otherwise, press the frog to subscribe. Press here for Master Playlist. Actually, down here is Master Playlist. Here for other videos. With that said, thank you very much for watching. Stay frog everyone, and I hope to see you then.